Now to a stunning story out of Washington where former staffers in Congresswoman Nancy Mace's office are reportedly calling out a toxic work culture after a recent mass accident at the South Carolina representative's D.C. office. According to the Daily Beast, Mace's entire D.C. office has turned over since November 1st, quoting former staff members who described the office as a, quote, toxic work culture driven by a delusional boss. Mesa's former chief of staff, Dan Hanlon, who was fired on December 1st, has even filed to run against Mace in her South Carolina district. Former staffers who spoke with the Daily Beast on the con condition of anonymity describe Mace as micromanaging the office all day and into the night. One former senior staffer claimed Mace called close to midnight on Christmas Eve, asking why she wasn't on TV more during the holiday week. Former staffers... By the way, a question I never asked. <laughs> former staffers described the job as grueling and thankless, adding that Mace created a, quote, demoralizing environment for staff. Mace's current chief of staff called the situation a non-issue, according to the Daily Beast, describing the turnover as, quote, new coach, new team in the D.C. office. I mean, yeah. so, I'm not surprised. So, Vaughn, um, it's been, it's been a very curious few years following Nancy Mace. And I know you've talked to members. I'm sure you've talked to members of Congress who've worked with her. I've talked to members of Congress and leadership that have worked with her. And they you can't predict the next move. You can't predict you can't predict what she's going to be doing. Uh, she just seems to be, well, I don't know, rudderless there. I mean, and if you look at the way she was leering at Hunter Biden like an eighth grader during that uh, House oversight hearing when he walked in, she was making like cat calling sounds and acting literally like an eighth grader. Well, but Is anyone surprised by this story? See, that's the thing, though. It's, it's like... Maybe sixth grader. Again, it seems that there's this evolution uh, from darting, getting extraordinarily Trumpy to then trying to be reasonable to then going Trumpy. I mean, what, what, what can you tell us uh, about your your uh, your reporting on Nancy Mace through the years? Well, well, look, I realize that folks can go through political evolution, but I got to tell you guys, this is a hell of a whiplash. Uh, two years ago, I was with Nancy Mace on the campaign trail when she was trying to hold on to her congressional seat because Donald Trump was trying to primary her in her South Carolina congressional district. And this was after Nancy Mace had suggested that there needed to be, you know, fresh face in the Republican Party after the January 6th attack and suggested that, you know, the lives of her family members could have been on the line. Uh, Nancy Mace, I, after she actually beat that Trump-backed primary challenger, I asked her the explicit question, how was she going to survive in a Republican Party that had been reshaped in Donald Trump's image? And she told me here at the time, quote, my message is the same to him as it is to anybody else on either side of the aisle. I am willing to work with anyone who is willing to work with me, full stop. Well, she's gone out of her way to work with him. And despite Nikki Haley being the one on the campaign trail with her at those stops that I was attending two years ago, trying to help her save her seat, just the other day, she was holding a press conference in South Carolina with cameras all around her, calling uh, Nikki Haley the China's favorite governor. Compare that to the words that Donald Trump had had for her back two years ago when he held a rally in South Carolina, when he called her a grandstander and he called her a, quote, untruthful grandstanding loser. Uh, this is the evolution of uh, Nancy Mace in the last two years and one that now she has primary challengers. June 11th is the day of that primary. I bet you we're going to be back in South Carolina over these next three months, guys. Mm. Probably so. NBC's wow. Vaughn Hilliard, live from Thank Las you, Vegas. Thank you so much. We really do appreciate it. And um, David, uh, David Fromm, uh, we could talk about Nancy Mace. We could talk about MTG. We could talk about so many characters. Uh, the Republican Party, not the Republican Party you and I uh, were, were members of or followed. Um, it's just, it's a party of gestures. It's, it's just a party of rudderless people who one day will take one position and, and the next will be like Mike Johnson and just do whatever Donald Trump tells them to do when he calls late at night. 
but some very brave and some very non rudderless people are in trenches right now in Ukraine on the front line of the defense of right. democracy, on the front line of defense of American security, and they are fighting without ammunition, without shells, because this Congress has cut them off. It's now more than 100 days since President Biden sent a request for aid to Ukraine, and, House, and, and now Senate Republicans have said no and no and no. This border deal was the price that President Biden was prepared to pay to save Ukraine. He was prepared to give up the most cherished democratic aspirations on immigration. No amnesty, no pathway to citizenship, little for the dreamers, nothing. Give, uh, give Republicans everything they've ever said they want. The strongest Republican bill, not in decades, as The Wall Street Journal said. I've been writing about, I wrote editorials for The Wall Street Journal on immigration in the 1980s. This is the strongest immigration bill ever, 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 ever. Uh, at least in the, since, since the 1920s, the strongest bill ever, ever, ever. President Biden said, offered it as, as a way to save Ukraine, and Republicans are saying no in order to betray Ukraine. Well, and, and you see these editorial writers talking about Joe Biden being weak on foreign policy. It's just a total lie. It is the Republican Party and Donald Trump's Republican Party that's abandoning freedom fighters right now in Ukraine. It's the Republican Party that's getting in the way of us sending foreign aid to Israel so they can defend themselves. It is the Republican Party that wants chaos at the southern border for another year. I mean, it's absolutely shameful. And the writers out there that are talking about Joe Biden being weak please. when it comes to foreign policy, please save your lies for somebody else. I mean, you'd have to be really stupid to believe that because the fact is right now it's News. Donald Trump and it is the Republican Party that is making America and making the West weaker. Staff writer at The Atlantic, David Frum, thank you very thank you. much for thank being you. on this morning. We really appreciate your insight.